for Taku Sakai, we capture fish in the lower river using fish wheels. And um, then we tag those fish with spaghetti tags. Okay. And I think I actually have an example of one laying around here. I don't know if I have a, yeah, I have a, here's one we use for coho. So this one's gray, but the ones we use for sockeye are blaze orange. Sockeye, you can see a spaghetti tag on that one. Yeah. And the spaghetti tag on that one. And this is, you know, 100 plus miles up river and they're still on there. Um, that's an example. Of course, what we do is we tag them at Canyon Island and for the marker capture for sockeye, we just look at the marked fraction, the fraction of the fish that possess the spaghetti tags in the Canadian fishery, which is just a short distance up river. Okay. So this is anecdotal information. I just thought it was kind of neat to take the photo. Yeah, yeah. Them, so, but you know, those fish they catch in the lower river are dime bright and they're commercial product. Here's the traditional project. This was 2017, we tagged 5,700 fish with spaghetti tags. Um, we looked at 30,000 fish in the Canadian fishery. And then of those, 1,240 had spaghetti tags. So that's a marked fraction of 4%. Okay. All right, so what's happening is, we're find, what we've done is we put a project in the water to look at whether or not truly all of these fish that we tag are actually going up and entering the study, entering the population that we're looking at. And so that's a, it's a check of an assumption because you're assuming that you tag these fish and they all are available for recapture. But what we're finding out through this radio telemetry work is that a, a fraction of them are actually not making it up above the border, entering the population. And that's due mostly to seal mortality. The seals are eating the fish. So what happens is we tag them, they're a little lethargic after the tagging procedure. It might take them a day. They might immediately turn and go right up river. It might take a day, it might take a week. But right down river of Canyon Island is a big herd of seals that sit down there. And these fish sulk back down in there and they're easy picking. So we put the radio tags on this aspect, these two columns, to look at, we put 277 radio tags on last year. And of those, 100 and, let me make sure this is right, 187 of them actually went above the border and entered the population. So let's see if that's the correct math. So yeah, so roughly 32% of them did not make it into the population, right? And they did a study years ago, John Eiler did, I think the rate was 41%. Now some of that could be natural, like you brought up the other day, it could just be the seals catch fish in the little river, which they do. So some of that 32% would happen naturally, not a result of the handling mortality. So that's the worst case scenario for 2017, you see? Okay. And it's something close to that, I would argue, because it is, you know, the seals aren't killing 5% of the fish. I mean, that's a lot of fish. They don't take that many. But they're killing some fraction of the run that's going up. So it's somewhere near 32%, but something something less than that. Maybe yeah. 30? Yeah. So, and that's how that works. So what we did was we... It's just that simple. We know that of the 277 radio tags, 187 of them went in. If you use this information, that, it, that equates to a mark recapture in river run estimate of 105,000. If we didn't account for that, the estimate would be 155,000. We'd overestimate the run. Okay. See? Um, spaghetti tags. So this is the standard way of doing business. So what we want to do is, you can't run a radio tag study every year because it's just too expensive, right? So. What we want to do is be able to just simply discount the number of spaghetti tags that we release every year by a, fa a factor and then run the standard operation and discount it, have, have a more accurate estimate. So, okay. Yeah, so we have the juvenile tagging programs. We then have the adult enumeration programs, which looks at all the harvest and the escapement. So we have the total run. We have it by age, so then we break it down by brood year. So we know out of a given batch of eggs, how many smolt went out, how many adults came back over how many years, you know, because Chinook will come back uh, over five years in the ocean, right? Yeah. They can be seven-year-old fish, so um, from a given batch of eggs. So we monitor that. We have long-term data sets with all that. Um, the unique aspect for Taku is the juvenile work. 
And on top of that, you know, because there are adult programs elsewhere, um, you know, they have a mark or they have radio telemetry projects on the Susitna, for instance. Uh, they'll have elaborate adult programs, but what really brings this to the pinnacle is the smolt work. Now the sockeye program, what, what really sets it apart from other programs is the fact that it started in 1984. It's been a consistent program for, you know, almost four decades. What is yeah. that, four decades? It's close. Yeah, yeah, So 34 years. Yeah, so um, Chinook dates back to the 60s. Actually, it goes back well beyond that. Yeah. But we actually have uh, uh, calibrated aerial surveys back to the late 60s. Okay. That's, you don't find that anywhere else. Yeah. Um, we have full run reconstruction on Coho from the early 90s. And you know, r full run reconstruction, that, in, that allows like marine survival estimates. And that's a big one right now, because every, you know, the Chinook salmon are in the dumps right now. Yeah. What we know from the Taku program, along with the program on the Eunuch, the Stikine, and the Chilcat, which are, you can't find those on wild stocks anywhere else on the coast. We know what the marine survival is. We know what the freshwater production is. So we can tell the problem is with those stocks is the fact that the fish are dying at sea. It has nothing to do with the marine or the freshwater. Yeah. So we pinned it down. Yeah. It's hard to do that elsewhere. Yeah. And um, anyway, it, it's considered the gold standard in my opinion. Yeah. The Taku Stock Assessment Program. On top.